It's still plus politics. Now we take you to a conversation we had yesterday, of course, about the um, APC, uh, the PDP, I beg your pardon, um, giving the former president, Lucia Gombasanjo, an ultimatum to withdraw or clarify his statement concerning their presidential flag wearer at Tikwa Bubaka. Take a listen, and when we come back, we'll be saying our goodbyes. Unless former President Olusegun Obasanjo clarifies the comment he allegedly made that picking former Vice President Atiku Abubakar as running mate in 1999 was a mistake, the People's Democratic Party has threatened to break the egg and tell the whole world and Nigerians who Obasanjo is in 48 hours. The media was awash on Monday with former President Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, his quote to have said that uh, he made a mistake while selecting Alhaji Atiku Abubakar as his vice president in 1999. However, Chairman of the People's Democratic Party Board of Trustees, Senator Walid Jibrin, said that if the former president failed to clarify the statement in 48 hours, the party will be left with no option but to expose Obasanjo to tell Nigerians who he really is. Now, Senator Jibrin, who spoke to journalists, explained that the PDP was high in regards and respect for the former president, but it will be very disappointing if the statement credited to him is true. Well, joining us to discuss this are Biodon Shomi, a political analyst, and Bola Oba, who is also a political commentator. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Great. Um, it's a very interesting conversation that um, we have here. Um, I'll start with you, Mr. Oba. We have seen the former president, Olusha Gwabasanjo, speak and comment on several issues, especially, especially personalities. I mean, we can even make reference to his very famous book, My Watch, um, and some of the statements that he has made um, about people. And his open letters, he's known also for his open letters. But uh, in the thick of the, you know, the campaign season, he talks about uh, the former vice president being a mistake uh, on his part in 1999. And what we wonder, um, why, would you, why would he be making such a statement? Is it just one of those political statements that are made at times like this? Or could there be more to this? I wonder why anybody in the leadership of PDP would want to grace former President Olushe Gwobasido with the honor he does not deserve. They will be committing political hierarchy in this political society if they want to engage with Olusha Gwobasanjo on anything that we give, that we give him relevance, especially for the mischief that he has set out to do, they should just leave him on his own and let him do whatever he likes. Because at some point, at some point, the public will see him in, as a nuisance that is just there. But if they want to engage him as they have threatened to do, they will be the worst for him. There are those, who, there are those who would would be very... Not so much that I love them, not so much that I'm a member of the party, but it will be a strategic PR error to engage Obasanjo in any form of embroglio, especially on remarks and opinions that he has codified in his book. I wonder why they want to engage in this, in this, uh, in this rough, rough of fight. There are those who, who, who would, um, you know, um, not like the idea of you speaking of the former president uh, in that regard, calling him mischievous or um, saying that he does not necessarily have relevance or should not give relevance um, to uh, what he has to say. How this is, this define, is an elder statement. This is somebody who, who many politicians who hold in high regard. Yeah, they still yeah, pay courtesy visits to him. For Atiku, and now, four years after, he remembers again. 
after the villainy that himself, that, that he had done at Tiku, at the penultimate electionary cycle four years ago, he supposedly forgave him and campaigned for him, and suddenly now, Atiku is a villain again. So he wanted to sell us a villain four years ago. If you engage such a man and don't let Nigerians just reveal the fact that this is a man who could be very inconsistent because of the mischief that drives him, hmm. you will be giving him relevance. Okay. Mr. Shomi, I'd like to bring you up, uh, bring you in on this. Okay. Um, um, many have reacted to the former president's remarks. Many have wished it away as a mere political statement. But then, like I said at the beginning, he's known for many of his open letters. We saw the many that he wrote uh, under the, the present administration. We have also seen his books and all of the information that's within. Um, why do you think that pres former president Olusegun Obasanjo is so hung up? on his vice president. And j just to borrow some things that um, Mr. Oba just said, that why would he want to mar, uh, you know, uh, the campaign of someone who also works with him and campaigned for him, then all of a sudden he's become a bad person. Don't people change? And doesn't he reserve the right to make his um, assertions? Uh, yeah, uh, honestly to speaking, to be fair to... Um, Gen uh, the former president, Luther Gombasojo, this was not all the Kof remark. He made the remark at an award, leadership award event in um, Abe Kuta in his um, presidential library. And he didn't speak particularly on vice president, former vice president Atiku. It was, I don't think he was a target. Um, um, I'm not a spokesperson, but I read the whole debate clearly. Um, he spoke within the context of trying to share his leadership experience. And within that context, he highlighted the good and also the errors he made. One of the errors, which according to him, was nominating article. He did not go into details. He highlighted also his regret over his refusal to eat the warning given by the then American ambassador, I think it was Campbell, Ambassador Campbell, that he should leave the country or he should move into American embassy and uh, be granted asylum, that the decision has been granted, that Abacha would arrest him, he should move in to get asylum. He regretted not doing that, and he said he refused, um, but eventually was arrested. He said he could have lost his life and not been alive. So he was making reference to errors of judgment on his own part. It was not a targeted attack on Atiku or any other person. Uh, that is the way I read it. But in terms of the reactions of PDP to it, I understand this is the political period. So they're likely going to be very sensitive, you know, to it. I'm not a card carrying member of any political party in Nigeria. So they will be very, very sensitive to such remarks. Um, I don't think Obasanjo intended, you know, to to reopen the whole wounds when he actually came out against that. I think this was just something out of um, his own leadership experience. It would be wise for the PDP leadership not to go into any tango with them because what would they gain? Obasanjo is not contesting, and as far as I know, he does not have a horse in this uh, race. So if he doesn't have the odds in the race, why do you want to um, drag him in and then uh, bring out the worst in Obasanjo, which uh, it, it can be bestial when it comes to, you know, doing damage in this kind of situation. Just, 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 just to push you further, if the PDP is giving an ultimatum, which is a, a two-day ultimatum, and saying that they will break the egg, um, what could they possibly have on the former president uh, that would probably, in their words, break the egg? And, and what does this do to, um, you know, their, their campaign, to the, to the people who they're trying to get across to? Again, like you said, well, the former president is not running for any office, so he probably has nothing to lose. Um, but 
in terms of Atiku Abubakar and what the vice president or the former president has been saying, should we be paying attention to the former president, being that he has also made statements previously about certain people in government that has one way or the other, may not necessarily come out, you know, plainly uh, to say this is who this person is, but he has warned, and we have seen that some of those things have uh, somewhat played out. Um, uh, should Nigerians be wary of this statement by the former president? Yes, um, you see, what can the PDP leadership, what can they do to Obasanjo? A man that, you know, saw his membership camp, you know, left the party. They've been the one going to him. The man has been saying, we saw it all. The man kept staying in his um, Abe Kuta abode, but we've seen the troops of PDP leader, past officials, all of them trooping to his house, either for an advice for one thing or the other. Um, he shows even outside the political party and outside government, Obasanjo is still very, very relevant within the politics of um, PDP because he actually midwife many of the leadership. You know, who, to let those who are claiming they want to deal with him, uh, many of them are actually his products. Now, when you go back and look at... Uh, Mr. Shaomi, are you still there? Uh, I think we lost that connection. What, with... no, it's the idea of the talk time. Okay. That's the only thing that they can talk about. Every other thing is known. It's done well debated. All right, I think we lost our connection there. Let me go back to um, let me go back to Mr. Oba. The drone jives sometimes in it. That's what, there is nothing. Mr. Show me. I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're having connection damage. issues with you, and your audio keeps going in and out. So we'll try to fix that and come back to you. But Mr. Oba, um, the PDP is alleging that the grouse between or uh, the grouse between the former president and his vice is the fact that he refused to support his third term agenda. Something that a lot of Nigerians said would never had sailed through, even if, you know, even though they tried. But was that down to his vice president? And is this an issue we still should still be debating in 2022? Look, I'll go back to the point I made earlier, and that is, it does not do the PDP leadership and the PDP presidential candidate any good to excite the, the madness that they are beckoning at at this juncture. For a man who has suffered, what can they throw at a passenger that can be worse than some of the things that have been alleged against him, some of which I cannot even mention here? even when they've been factually alleged against him. What can be worse than that? And every time they engage in a form of PR, PR dwell with him, they will be getting dirtier. Why would they want to do that? I think it's incumbent on candidate Atiku to call whoever wants to be a spokesperson or wants to fight his corner to tell that person to chill and walk away from this fight. This is the fight that one must learn to walk away from because you want to talk about third term, everybody in Nigeria who is a political observer knows that Obasanjo was the one power in third term and he has consistently denied it. The book, the book, my watch, some have labeled the book, my lies. You, did, did you, did you, have you, does anybody watching this program now remember Professor Wallace Oyinka's opinion about the book? And apart from Professor Wallace Oyinka, does an average Nigerian political watcher not know that Obasanjo was behind, you know, tenure and engagement, and yet he has consistently denied it. When all the facts point to him, nobody is saying that Tiku is a saint. But in so much as the PDP has chosen him as their candidate on this occasion, 
They need no, they have enough to manage with the squabbles that are, that is you know that is ensuing as a result of you know Atiku choosing a vice presidential nominee. Okay. They have that to manage because there is seem to be a tendency for, for, for a form of actualization to develop in the party. Why would they want to bring up Ambassador into the mess? And this is somebody who does not even like PDP giving this free advice. Okay. I, I wonder what they want to gain. Oh, well. Unfortunately, uh, our time is up. I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Biara Shomi is a political analyst. Balaba is also a political commentator. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. And that's the show tonight. We want to thank you for being part of the conversation. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m., as we talk on all the big political stories across the country. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.